And if you don't know, now you do know in the greatest city in the world, New York City, let's go. It's your boy Guns here, The Gun Show, G-U-N-Z, on Spotify, on <laughs> iTunes, and wherever else you may find me. You all know it by now, keeping us all, or trying to keep us all as sane as possible, but I am so stoked because we're going to bring back the good vibes and the future positive vibes right now with my man. I feel like I have probably for years had him on the gun show longer than anybody else. The only band that I think might have been on the show more is all time low. Um, Because all time low had been on a bunch within the last year or so with the new album and stuff. But he is our guy, Travis, we the Kings, my man. What's up, baby? How are you, dude? Catch up. You know, when we have new music, it's like, (laughs) all right, guns, let's do this. I want that top spot. There you go. Fantastic, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, Always, dude, it's always fun to catch up and just, you know, shoot the shit. Dude, I, it was funny because I was like, oh, I'm going to be speaking with Travis. And of course, like, I always consider you a friend. You know what I mean? And like, but, yeah. you know, life happens, things go on. But it's not like going from like high school and then like you don't really talk to your high school friends as much. Like, we all still communicate, but just yeah. a lot of it's like, oh, well, they'll be around three times a year on tour anyway in New York City. Like, we'll catch up then. Right. But it just sucks. Which, that- which is more than we see our family and, and like, and the people that we grew up with. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I was just thinking, man, like I obviously like throughout the years, man, you always like I was always able to lean on you and you always came on the gun show. So I really do appreciate it, man. Like we were rising together, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I think like attracts like and, you know, and success breeds success. So it was, was, dude, it was a fun time. I I really cherish those years of, um, you know, the the early gun show, the early We the Kings, the early Mayday Parade, all time low. Um, Like they were really good years because we were all, we kind of all had each other's backs and, and we were all growing um, at a similar rate. And, you know, we were all getting into vans at the same time, then buses at the same time. They were getting, you know, bigger stages at the same time. And then, you know, some, some magazine or radio play. It was, it was really cool to be a part of that. And I feel like, you know, there, there's a lot of artists that, um, you know, will come to me for different reasons because they were a fan of We The Kings and started their own project. And they're like, what's, what's the trick? And I, I never know what to say. Like, I, I right. don't, I don't have an answer because, you know, it, it, I, I guess the, the closest answer would be build that community, find people that have your back, find people that will kill for you, uh, that believe in you, surround yourself with them and kill for them too. Um, but, but on your own, I, I just think it's too tough. I think yeah. it's too tough to, to, to navigate, especially like, you know, that was before everything, you know, hit the fan. With like, <laughs> Regardless you know. of the last year of our lives, you yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. But you're right, man. Like it was su- such a special time and place. And, you know, you still had the local venues and the scenes across, you know, the country, but also bands that literally just all kind of came together. And like, I'm wearing, I was funny. I was mentioning before I, I found my old glamor kills hoodie. Like that all so kind of came up in the MySpace era with the pure volume days and just mp3.com. Yeah. And then obviously we all, you know, continue to rise. And then you'd be so stoked if like, if, you know, a band song was like, a, a video was played on Fuse at like midnight or MTV2 yeah. with Good Charlotte. You'd be like, yeah, Good Charlotte, let's fucking go. Yeah, um, yeah. But like, it really kind of, you're exactly right, man. Like, I feel bad for those that aren't able to experience it or didn't experience it because I truly feel like it did kind of shape our appreciation of things that much right. more with music, yeah, you know? I agree. I agree. Do you, um, as we speak here with Travis from We The Kings, we got a brand new EP that just dropped. It's solid. We're going to delve into it. I'm so stoked to play a song here on The Gun Show in just a couple minutes. We've had a couple of them too, the Adobe Radio Rotation as well. But before we get into all that, man, um, I guess the first thing is, how the hell are you? Uh, <laughs> how are you, buddy? I'm fantastic, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're so good at this. You're like, there's, there's never dead air. I I gotta, I gotta celebrate you for a second and, uh, and let you know that, you know, as an artist, we, we do a ton of interviews and, and some are, some are fun. The majority of them feel like work and a lot of them are, are just like struggle bus, like getting through and, and I, you know, to, to your credit, you know, you and I are friends. So it's like, you know, anytime that whether we hop on the phone or zoom or in person, like we go right back to, you know, just very easy and comfortable to talk to. So, um, I want to, I want to compliment you on, on 
and, you, and you're just getting better and better. It's very, very cool. So awesome. with that said, Thank you. Uh, I am fantastic. I've, my wife and I have been just like procreating like champions, <laughs> like just rabbits. And uh, we're expecting baby number four. I have three girls now, as Man. you know, and, uh, and we're waiting to find out whether this is where a girl has come like end of May, early June. So Wow. Well, congratulations on that. Congratulations on the sex. You know, good, good yeah. job. <laughs> like, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody got laid during quarantine. Let's go. Let's. Go. Oh my gosh! You know, it's so funny. Uh, you know, we we kind of my my oldest daughter's five, so you know, she obviously we're we're talking about the baby in mommy's belly, et cetera, et cetera, and she'll put like you know a, a baby doll in her shirt. She's like, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. And, and then she like, you like, you can kind of see like the gears turning and she's like, how do I get pregnant? And you're like, first of all, you're five. And second of all, never. Uh, <laughs> and right. While I'm alive, never. Uh, no, that's not true. But you know, it's like, it's really, I, I'm in a weird position because I, you know, I, over the next, however, several years where they get more uh, inquisitive about certain things that are tough to explain like being a dad of of toddlers is super easy you like right yeah they they expect everything from you and nothing at the same time right. you know? throw on disney plus throw on like a youtube like whatever exactly. they watch yeah. these days you're good Con- yeah the park you know whatever like like the art of distraction is a very real thing right um so anyways yeah um we're, we're good man we're uh everybody's happy the the band's great yeah you know, we're it's been tough. You know, we, we've been in our different cities, but, um, you know, I, like I mentioned, this is the longest time we've ever been home and ever been off tour. So there, that massive silver lining, uh, which, which I think I've, I've mentioned is like, it feels, I, I'm almost feel guilty sometimes feeling happy. Like, you know, if I'm, if I'm home with, with my wife and daughters, or if I'm home in the studio writing music, like, I almost feel guilty when I'm having like, when I'm in a good moment because so much of the world is, is genuinely hurting like really badly. And, you know, you, you feel like you should be hurting with them and you do, but, but then the guilt comes in. Like I I shouldn't feel happy right now. Obviously not happy that the pandemic's going on, but like, but finding the positivity within every situation. Um, So so kind of like bouncing back and forth, it just feels like a giant roller coaster of, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm happy today. And then I see something that is just like incredibly upsetting and, and I'm bummed. And then, yeah. you know, my daughter comes and makes a face at me and I'm happy again. And then I read something and it's negative. And then I come to the studio and I read a cool verse that has like a deep lyric and I'm happy. Again. You know, it's like, yeah. it, and, and that's Groundhog's Day for the past year. Great. I, I, you're exactly right with that. And, uh, it, but I feel that if anything, we need to take any positivity that we can these days. And that's why it's like, listen, if something, if you're happy or excited about something now more than ever, you shouldn't feel ashamed. But I understand why that is like, you know, you look at every, there's a lot of people that are suffering from everything going on right now. Yeah. Fi- finances to depression, to anxiety, to not sure what's going to happen to just, to just when will things get normal? Will things ever be the same? There's so much overwhelming forces right now, but that's why we need to take any sort of, I don't care whether, like you said, it's like, you know, your, your, your child smiling at you that puts you in a good mood to, to maybe like, you know, you, some people do are getting job promotions right now. Like it's like, yeah. if that's bringing you, if, you need to take those wins when we can get them these days, man. Totally. totally. And, it, and, and you can find like, you don't have to have like the family and the, and the, the career. If, if you're good enough, you can wake up and be like, damn, I woke up today. Like, like, that's awesome. You know, right. or, 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 you know, I have food in the fridge. Like that's totally. awesome. Yeah. I have a shelter over my head. Like the, the contrast uh, of the world around us, a lot of times you can find positivity just within that itself. Yeah. And also like it, whether it's you're trying to like focus on your health or something and no, like I'm not going to eat sweets today. It's like, boom, you didn't eat sweets today. There's your victory. It's, you know, yeah, everyone, yeah. everyone's thing can be your victory. Your victory level can be uh, your win level can, you know, is all individual and those things matter over time for sure. And can help build up, you know, as we continue going forward for sure. But it has and, and yeah. it's been long enough where people, 
I, I think people are, are coming around to like being uh, open to hearing the positivity. And so like when you do share something like that and, and you do share like, Hey, you know, today I had a win. I think, I think the majority of people are like, you know, unifying and saying like, Hey, like, he, he has a win. Like, that's, that's awesome. You know, we're, we're proud. Like maybe you didn't feel the win in your day, but like you like seeing something positive, right. you know, in the, in the world. And, yeah. Uh, and, and so, yeah, people shouldn't be uh, ashamed or, 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 you know, shy to, to share that stuff because I think, yeah, you're right now more than ever, it, it needs to be out there. And something that did come out here was, of course, the We the Kings EP just dropped yeah. Saga, man. My man. Listen, I've had you on throughout the years. And it was funny because for a while there, I felt like I had you on like every two or three months because you were <laughs> always releasing solo stuff or a new song or collab with somebody. Because that's what Travis Clark does, man. You always just release songs. But we haven't gotten songs for you in, in, in a while. And yeah. you guys put out this EP. Before we talk about it, a couple things. Um, no one like you, going to be a jam, that course, et cetera, just a jam. I also really like Falling. I felt like Falling's okay. got like a little bit like an Ed Sheeran type vibe to it. And like I, I, anytime you put out music, man, I feel that I can grab different parts of it. And with this album, you've got like a little bit of a dance hip hop beat on one of the songs to more of a classic yeah. Me The King style. Yeah. And it's just a couple songs and that's hence the EP, but that's very cool, man, that you're still putting out sounds that we have not heard before from you and the right. band. And that's so, rad, so man. That's cool. Falling, falling itself. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate that. Um, falling was my attempt at, uh, I love Avicii's music. Absolutely yeah. love Avicii. And, uh, and I've always wanted to do a song that had like uh, an acoustic basis with you know an electronic beat and i was like this is the album i'm doing it <laughs> like definitely and, and that ended up being the thing but um dude the 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 cool part about saga was that we've never ever had a concept record before and, and i guess this is kind of a concept because each one of the six songs represents one of the albums one of the six studio albums that we've that we've put out so uh turn it up the first track and it's all in chronological order so turn it up the first track um is representative and reflects our first album and there's all kinds of different like easter eggs within the music within the instrumentation uh within the titling um different things like that 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 associate it with with each album that we've put out even the album artwork and things like that so it, it was really fun to to put this record together you know uh i'll be that it was you know during the pandemic and it was a little trickier um but it was really fun and, and actually kind of it, it ended up being like emotional because you're going back. Like I went through my phone and, and I was like, okay, let's, let's find pictures from, you know, 2007 when I was writing those first album songs, you know, where, where was I at like physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, what, you know, what, what was going on in my life? Right. Who was I with? Who was I hanging around with? Where was the band? Where, where were my hopes and dreams and trying to essentially get into my shoes in order to write a song that feels like it could have gone onto that said record. Wow. Um, yeah. And, you know, just going through it's dude, it's almost been 15 years. So going through some of those videos and, 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 and listening to the things that I was listening to then it was emotional. And, and I, uh, and I think it comes from a place of just being incredibly grateful for, for what, we, the Kings has, has achieved. And I mean, you, nobody knows it better than you. Like, to be in this industry uh, longer than two or three years is a giant win. Yes. You know, especially when you see other artists uh, and bands come and go and, and they, they reach bigger levels than you and then they, they leave. So, you know, just to kind of like do that steady growth, slow growth year after year after year is, is, um, is just something to be very proud of. So when yeah. you go back through and write new music, that's reflective of, of your past um, in this time that, you know, self-reflection is kind of a big thing, you know, like right, of course yeah. we, we, the band wanted to do it ourselves. And, and this is our version of a self-reflection album. That is wild, man. That's so awesome. And especially this time of, of all times, I mean, now, now is the time to do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you said, with, you know, the last year, the last couple months, et cetera, like, that a lot of people are going through their own stuff or figuring out who they are as a human being. But going back in the, in the music, man, that's 
wild. Like what we were, did you listen to like the albums? Like did you, what, did oh, you, yeah. did you read, did, which album did you, did you find a new appreciation of an era of We The Kings or did you, on the flip side, did you be like, oh, what were we thinking with this one? Tell me totally. your thoughts on that. <laughs> There, there was, there was definitely both. There was, I think, far more. What were we thinking? Uh, comments and 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 you know, why didn't we fix this? Like there, there's a couple like there's a vocal that's out of tune in one of the things, um, and I was like, why, why didn't I just resing that in tune? I totally can, you know, I could. Um, you know, what? Why did we do this part? Why did we repeat this part? if it holds no space, you know, there's, there's no reason for it. Why did we so many times we were like, why do we do this? But, <laughs> you know, I, I validate it by saying like, okay, that, that just means that we're growing. You know, if, right. if there's things that I would have changed uh, now, that means that like maybe we're getting smarter as songwriters or, or, or more talented in, in our own, you know, instrumentation and things like that. So, but it, you know, that, that was the main thought but there was a lot of times where i was like man i really like this song like i, I nice. you know w when you've put out six full albums and you play an hour and a half you really only get to play like two or three songs from each album right. so there's you know six to eight songs from every mm -hmm. single album that of the six uh you know so that's you know for over 40 songs that that don't really get to see the light of day at, at a concert and be, and by extension you, you kind of like lose track of yeah. so going back through we definitely listened to to the whole album it was a lot of fun and and just i don't i don't know there it, it helped to do that first uh listen to the whole record we didn't listen to any other records while we were doing that so um you know when we were doing turn it up it was only the first record i thought about how i wrote each song which was on an electric guitar so i was like I'm going to write this song and ended up being turned up, but I'm going to write it on electric guitar. I'm going to start it on electric guitar with a lead, like seven elevenths of that, you know, album to start with. So there, there actually was a lot of like thought that went into creating it. To, and I think the ultimate goal was, can we make a new EP called Saga, which represents our journey mm -hmm. uh, of a band that, that it, has it's new music that creates nostalgia you know can we put a new song out that puts people back to when they first heard that album from we the kings and um that that was just that was the whole goal of it we we're like how do we and and nobody had ever done that you know people had done concept albums of course but we wanted to just try something that we haven't heard of anybody doing right yeah I, and it, clearly I had it. I, like, I did not know that. And that's so rad. And my description of the EP, I was like, and I was like, and it also is We the Kings-esque. That's literally what I described it as, you know? I was like, and it reminds me of We the Kings. And boom, now you tell me that it was based on that. So clearly job well done, my friend. Thank you very much. And I, and I you know what, I would honestly, I would be lying if I, if I said that I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm active on social media and, and I see a lot of people's comments and, and, um, you know this about me, like, you know, sometimes I, I get uh, triggered and, and somebody will say like, oh, you know, I, I want something like the first album. You know, I, I right, miss like the Check Yes Juliet or Secret Valentine, Skyway yeah. Avenue, All Again For You era. I read that and it doesn't go away in my head. I'm like, you want that? Okay. I'm going to write, <laughs> uh, you know, a 2.0 <laughs> version of those songs. And so th there was definitely a, a large fan inspiration because it wasn't just that first album, you know, people were like Smile Kid's my favorite album, which was our second record. Uh, and these songs are my favorite from that. I, I registered that and I was like, oh. okay, you want that? I'm gonna, you know, third album, fourth album, fifth album, sixth album. They're, what the beauty about music is like, um, the, the hits of We The Kings aren't necessarily everybody's favorite song or, ever, or from everybody's favorite album that, that is a fan of your music. So, you know, you, you really, when, when people, I guess the, the, the moral of this story would be that when people talk, I listen, you know, and I, mm -hmm. and I, yeah. I try to uh, apply it, you know, to, to new music and, and to We The Kings in general. And, and on, on the flip side or not on the flip side, I should say, in addition to that, 
it's also fun from, I, I love that you kind of like went into that mindset of what, where we were as a band, whether it was, you know, the long hair era, like all, you know, the neon era, like all the different totally. stuff or like what we were going through at that time. But also in addition to that, you know, of course everyone likes the classic way the King songs, but you've also been around for 15 plus years right now that all yeah. of a sudden there's a new generation that are finding you out from the last album. You, you know what I mean? That their favorite song yeah. might be from the last album. And right being able to kind of get in that mindset when you're putting together this EP that also, and the bottom line is it excites you guys in the band. And that's what it all comes yeah. full circle to. You guys are the ones doing this. You want to be pumped up and exciting, excited about it. And you put out a ton of albums and various songs already. So let's do something that gets us energized for it. And that's what you were able to do with Saga. Yeah. It, it also, it does serve a purpose. Like you're right. You know, somebody might've heard about us from our very last album and I mean, think about it. This is not an ego statement. This is just, I, I've, I've had people say this to us, but We The Kings are some people's favorite band. And imagine your favorite band that you listen to, your, your, you know, imagine if you found out like they had three more records that you didn't know about. Like, that's a really cool thing. You'd be like, oh my God, like I get Christmas presents and, and I'm just going to listen to this music. So having each song from Saga represent one of the six albums and also kind of showcasing that, hey, we have six albums. So, you know, if you came on on album four, album one and missed a couple, you know, because life got crazy or came on in album six like this, it kind of represents like, hey, you might be in luck. You might have more more music and content to listen to and to absorb. I am so pumped for my audience right there right now because we got Travis from We The Kings. And I urge you all to go now and just delve back into you know, memory lane, but also we got a new touch because it is a band that has 15 plus years of being together and knowing each other and just you from yourself, being a producer, being a songwriter yourself and just elevating like just the potential of these songs. <laughs> and now people can go back and listen for the Easter eggs. You know what I mean? Or just like, yeah, totally. like be like, now they get it. You know, also the Avicii shout out, man. I went into a deep Avicii hole the last like couple years and unfortunately, like many things in life, we don't really appreciate things until that person's gone. Um, and that's what, that sucked for me. And then like the Netflix documentary came out and I really took a, for Tim, I took a, a big appreciation of, to him. But also I interviewed Incubus and Mike from Incubus, the guitarist with yeah. the curly hair, worked with um, Tim, which I didn't know until I saw the documentary. So when I interviewed him, uh, Incubus, I just talked to him on the side for a good amount because I was yeah. so, I just wanted to know his thoughts because he truly was a special individual. Anytime I was doing email night, I would always walk out to fade. We won't fade into yeah. darkness. Yeah, like of course. every single time, once a month, that was my walkout song. Like I took a huge, I still jam Avicii. Tell me about, were you always an Avicii fan? Like, uh, did you, I, have you delved just, down like I did? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think, for, for me, just at, at its core, I love when people try something new. And, and more than that, I love when it's actually good and I actually like it. Right. You know, a lot of people push the boundaries and, and try new things. And, and at a time where electronic music was so digital, um, like it brought almost like a rawness to it. And I love the fact, you know, like there was just – you know, there was a, a time where electronic music did, was, I mean, it's still now it's very relevant but, or prevalent, but um, there was a time where everything that you heard, like there weren't real instruments, you know, it, it was synthesizers and this and that, and it was cool music, but, but you really missed the, the rawness. And when I think it was like, he did a remix of like levels or, uh, or he did like a whole remix album of levels and I started listening to some of his stuff and, and how he used, you know, real acoustic, real piano and that, how he was a musician, you know, that, that wanted to use those things. I think I just kind of like fell in love with, with who he was as a, as a person, as far as like who, how he was releasing music. And, uh, and of course, as a singer of a band, you know, I wanted the music industry to shift back into like, you know, the, 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 my version of, of artistry, which is, you know, the, the real instruments and things like that. So that we, the Kings can tour and, and be become popular and, and, and all those things. So I, I looked at him not as like a, a competitor 
of like this guy is taking you know taking people to a whole different world from from live music and i looked at him as like an ally like this guy is is helping people transcend both worlds together right. and it, it's the same thing like you know when with collaborations when artists you know the singer of this band works with the singer of this band or, or whatever and then a fan likes both those bands. They're like, my worlds are coming together. And that's what it felt like. You know, I really liked electronic music and I, I love what We The Kings is as far as like, you know, um, rock alternative, there's too many subgenres, but, but, <laughs> you know, rock band and this, and, and for him to kind of like throw those things together. And, and I, I liked a lot of these singers that he had sing on it. And yeah, it just felt like my worlds were colliding and, and I really enjoyed it. And I, I, I enjoyed like even the full electronic stuff that he had. Um, but when he started doing things that I just had never heard before, like, you know, Hey brother. And um, right. The vocal layovers or the one with the Coldplay that the Coldplay yeah. song on the latest one is yes. a jam. Like this, uh, do, 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 do. like the breakdown in it is so good. It's called heaven for those that don't know. It's so yeah. freaking good, but so no, I, that's, you know, yeah, that's awesome, man. That's like, so cool. Yeah doing something that, that, um, that was reminiscent. I've always wanted to do it. And, and it just felt like the, the time that, that I could get away with, with doing something cool like that. Very cool, man. And uh, also from a, a songwriter perspective, it's cool that you were able to take those influences and be able to put it out on the EP saga and kind of just, you know, you know, kind of like your ode to, ode to a feature, as you had, yeah, as yeah, you had yeah. mentioned, you know, like that's the beauty about music, man. Um, I got two more questions here for Travis from We The Kings, not to kind of tone things down a little bit, but I've interviewed everybody throughout the pandemic. I've actually gotten some of the biggest bands I've had in years because everyone's stuck home. So right. I've actually... <laughs> <laughs> had the opportunities for bands. Silver linings, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, you're doing nothing. You want to come on the gun shows? The management's like, yes, keep them occupied, please. You know, for some of these other bands. But from a, from Travis's standpoint of somebody who writes songs, you've been able to write songs, you know, you have your studio in the background, the whole entire thing, you know, just always jamming out, always coming with ideas and thoughts. Did you find, I've had two different versions of this, of artists. One that have been able to be like, Yes, I'm still pink up the guitar. I'm able now more than ever before because I'm not as distracted to lay down a riff, to lay down a thought, to process mm -hmm. things because I can finally hone down my skills on this. But then I've had other people who are like, honestly, man, I took four months off. I, there was too much stuff, anxiety. Like I, I was too anxious. I didn't know what the hell was happening. I could not even think about putting my soul and heart into something right now. How did, yeah. what was your personal songwriting like the last year or so? So we, um, you know, we, we kind of came up with this concept for Saga uh, about six or seven months before, uh, before the pandemic hit. So we did a tour with State Champs and Simple Plan and turned it up with the first song that we were releasing from Saga. Excuse me. And we, we basically we had this idea and we had already a couple songs were in the can as it were to, to release and then the pandemic hit. And it was, it was interesting because, you know, some of the same themes from earlier records were similar to, uh, to what it felt like being in the pandemic, you know, like um, for smile kid, for example, and the second song, these nights, um, we, we basically, these nights was, it's a song all about like, you know, genuinely missing, m missing things, missing out and missing all the, the little things like, you know, missing when you would just be with your friends and it was just the most boring night of your life, but you were allowed to do it and you were able to do it. And I think that's, that can be so true for so many people right now. Like, listen, I don't miss just the best days of my life. You know, I don't miss the time before the pandemic. I, I like, I miss just everything, you know, everything before it. And, and so it, it gave us fuel, uh, for that fire to, to, to write music that was oddly parallel with certain songs from, from that record. Um, but instead of having to like go sit in those shoes, which, which we did anyways, but in, like you actually felt it. You really felt it. Um, and, and it, I don't know, we, I just used it as, um, as encouragement and motivation and inspiration 
you know, let's, let's take every situation that's negative or, or, or anything and let's make use of it. You know, like let's, we're, we're only get like this one life. Let's make the best of it. Let's keep, let's keep positive. Cause at the end of the day, like you have a choice, like positivity is a choice. Um, I really believe that. And, uh, and, and so we, we did make the best of it. And, and another song that I did with um, Pierre and Chuck from Simple Plan called The Light was basically the song just hopefully offering hope for everybody. Like, mm-hmm. hey, this is the time where we need it. Like, and I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's, and it's not, it's not death in the way that, you know, that phrase has always been used. It, uh, it's actually the quite opposite, you know, it's, it's life and living. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I was able to, to use it, but there were for sure, there were a couple months where like it kind of snowballed. Like I didn't go in the studio, uh, one day and then, uh, and then the next day and the next day. And then I started thinking like, man, I haven't been in the studio for a while. And I was, you know, I was busy doing other things, but it, you know, sometimes you lose like writer's block is tough on its own you know, and then after you've already written about a certain subject, so, you know, we've, we had written two songs about, uh, you know, what, how we were feeling in the pandemic and, and, you know, like almost like needing something new, you know, you could write about that thing all day long, but at the end of the day, you're going to put out a record in the midst of a pandemic and quarantine where people already feel that way, you know? Right. And, and I think with music, it's really cool when you can make somebody feel something new. Mm-hmm. Um, so we didn't want to like spend too much time on it. Um, and, and yeah, it, it was, it was just about doing it, checking it off the list of like things that we we were, were feeling at the time and then, and then letting it go and just trying to write about something else. Well, it definitely came across solid, man. And we're stoked. And I think, you know, in the beginning of pandemic and even throughout like the summer and stuff, when all of a sudden it went from like, oh yeah, we're going to be, everyone stays in time for two weeks. We'll be fine. All of a sudden two weeks turned to two months and we're just like, no, just, you know, by summer, the heat will kill the virus and we'll be back to normal. And all of a sudden you're just like, what's happening? It's 4th of July. I remember that (laughs) because I was in Florida and I was like, okay, it doesn't get hotter than Florida for right. the summers. So like, if, if that is remotely true, like right. we're set. We're, we're all good. <laughs> yeah. And oh, then, so it's a 4th of July. And I'm like, I don't even know it's a 4th of July. Cause I can't even do anything. You know what right. I mean? Like, but so, so and true, then a couple man. months after that, you're like, Oh, actually, sorry. The, the yeah. virus doesn't die in the heat. And you're yeah. just like, well, that hope is all gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There goes that. It's like, oh, you yeah. tell me now it did. Oh, man. But but I do think that it, in the beginning, it's like people kept holding off albums or whatnot. And, you know, for those that did release them, All Time Low ended up releasing their album, which I thought was yeah. solid. But then Lady Gaga, she held hers off for like three months because she was like, oh, I want to be able to tour on it or at least do right. radio press because it was so unsure. We didn't know what the heck was happening. But I am stoked because I truly believe and have said this that we still do need new music. And that's why, you know, whether it's six songs right here with We The Kings or whether it's a full album with somebody else, or whether it's a band nobody's heard of, whether it's a TikTok feature, whatever it might be for an artist out there, everyone's home. Everyone's like, we're all looking for that next thing, whether it's a content piece or whether it's music to listen to. And with a band that does have a history like We The Kings, all these different sounds throughout the years, all these albums, relentless touring throughout the years, being able to get new music right now Six yeah. new songs is fucking cool, man. And I appreciate it. And I know the fans do as well. So job well done. And I'm stoked that you didn't wait till April to release this. I feel like now is a good time. <laughs> well, I, I think you nailed it. I think, you know, artists are, are so used to, uh, to, to releasing a record and then you, you start the touring cycle and the radio cycle and the, and the, the promo. And, and it's been that way since the beginning of popular music. So this whole idea of like, well, you know, and, and especially in the beginning, people weren't really sure, like, how long is this thing going to last? You know, like, and if it's only going to be a couple months and then we're going to beat it, then, yeah, let's hold it off, release the record, and then go do what we're used to doing, touring and promoting the album. And then, you know, two months turned into three months, turned into four months, turned into half a year, turned into, you know, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, uh, well, you know, you don't want to keep holding it off and then have three albums you know, on deck, ready to go because you waited that long and right. then they all kind of get swept under the rug. So, uh, we just figured, you know, we can do a full album, um, after, after this concept and it was just easy to, to be here in the studio and, and yeah. to, to record the six albums that meant a lot to us that, that had a concept to it and, and we put it out and it's nice. And now we get to, you know, focus on the future of the band. 
Well, job well done. My man, Travis from We The King. Definitely check it out. It's Saga. It's available now everywhere. Definitely check it out. We've been adding it to the Gun Show rotation and Adobe Radio rotation. Uh, my final thing that I, I don't know if it's happening. I literally have no idea. But a Gun Show suggestion would be if there's any possible way that um, you guys should think about Jimmy Eat World had just done it. All Time Low did it, et cetera. A lot of, everyone's, a lot of bands are doing Under Oath, et cetera. But the live streams. So if there's any possible way we can get a live stream with We The Kings, you should definitely put it on the radar. Maybe like after the snow, like uh, when things are a little bit better, maybe whatever the hell the heck it happens. Right. You should do that because being able to hear these songs as well as the old classics in that live stream setting, I think would be something special, my man. So keep so that I, on the radar. It's definitely, we are, we are actively trying to do it. The, we we don't want to do it like like every other artist um, because th- they did great and and they I th- I thought some of those live streams were just absolutely incredible yeah um, so we we want to do it we want to make it special um, and and then it's really just about like the logistics of right. how do we get a genuine live you can always pre tape things and 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 put it out but how do we genuinely get it live how do we get the servers how do we you know pay companies to like make sure that people are getting it uh you know and 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 how they're going to get it so it's it's definitely like we the kings wants to do it gotcha Um, nice and and it's just it's really about timing and and logistics and and things like that well we will absolutely be stoked on that man and i'll be jamming and sing like into fruition like yeah boom affirmed it yeah it's gotta happen man we gotta (laughs) have it i want to be in my group chats with my friends or on twitter getting it trending and just everyone sipping beers having some drinks it's like we're there i pull out the red solo cup i'm jamming along in my family room till she takes me high let's effing go baby set up some like bar stools and lay on them like you're crowd surfing (laughs) i was a i was a huge crowd surfer back in the day as you know oh my god oh yeah Good old times. His name is Travis. My fan club was called We the Guns back in MySpace days. That's, That's right. how long I've known you. You used to have Travis's I was very hair. Proud of that too. Travis's I was- hair was like a fan account and shit. It was like Gascart's eyebrows. Travis's hair. so funny. And I, I, you know, when we started the band, so the the hair's still in existence. It's still there. When we started the band, I had no idea that that was going to be such a thing because for my entire life as a kid, I got made fun of for having red hair. So the irony of it being the staple of We The King's aesthetic, our look, um, was just so ironic to me. And when people would come up to me at shows, be like, can I touch your hair? First of all, I was like, sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know why you would want to do that. It's like super nasty right now, but they would do it. And they're like, Oh, it's so soft. You know? <laughs> and I was like, this is crazy. Like, oh, where was this world when, when I needed you most? And like, like when I was getting made fun of growing up, <laughs> dude, coming home crying, like people hate my hair. Sh- wanted to shave it off because like, it was, you know, it was wild. What a time, man. What a time. Well, listen, now you've got another EP, six more songs that you can go and appreciate. The Mike Posner, we debuted a song with you and Mike Posner exclusively on the gun show back in the day. Do you remember that? We we tried to do it before uh, they could cease and desist from the major label. And and we're like, are we allowed to do this? We're like, probably not. Let's do it. You're like, here, I'm sending you something. Don't say who it is, but say that you have an exclusive <laughs> premiere. <laughs> and we took off, oh, man. I love yeah, you, man. man. A lot of memories. Like and you, here's to 15 plus years more, hopefully sooner than later. Everybody out there, stay safe. Looking forward to the next chapter and what's next in We the Kings. But we've got it right now. We've got Saga, six new songs. We'll play one of them right now. My man, Travis Clark. Follow him on all the socials. Follow me, The Gun Show, G-U-N-Z. We are balling, baby. Uh.